righty, there we go. Welcome to the Hip Hop Hustle podcast. We are back for another episode. I'm extremely excited about my next guest, my current guest, the one and only Slickter Victor. Uh, you know if the rhyme's in the name that he's got to come with some great songs. But man, uh, pleasure to have you on the show. Not only a musician, but author, a uh, public speaker, you do some acting as well. And you came out with three singles uh, in 2023, Fan Bro, uh, Counting Money, and Christmas Morning. So, man, absolute pleasure to have you come through. And you've also published a book as well. Yes, yes, man. I appreciate it, appreciate it. My name, yeah, I'm Slick the Victor, uh, New York, New York in the house. You know, big out to Australia. That's where I started the music, actually. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. What made you start in Australia? So I was uh, I was living out there. I was on my um, on my business holiday um, uh, visa. I was uh, working, having a good time, enjoying life. And um, I had an ex girlfriend I just uh, had a breakup with, and um, she had sent me this long email. And I was like, happened to be in the studio with an uh, artist out there by the name of Manu Crooks. And um, I was in the studio with Manu, my boy JD, IE, and uh, I was like, let me respond back with a song and. Like I you put together the beat and then I just responded back with the song and was like I go. <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of Manu Crooks. Uh I think he's a Sydney oh, yeah. local. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Sydney. That's why I live in Sydney. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's so funny. So what did the emails how long was this email that you got? It was like it was like I don't know. I didn't really read it too too in depth. It was but it was it was fairly long, man. It was like a couple of pages in that like, you know, like it was <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just scrolled through and through and through, and I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna respond back. All right, so, so you did a, a scheme, and then what made you feel like you needed to respond back in song version? I'm always interested in this. I've never had the opportunity to ask this type of question, but like, why song? I guess I'm just trying something different. I, I mean, I'm like I said, like you said before, I'm an author, so typically I like write books and things like that, you know, and that's how like I express my problems or my life my life or my you know my memoirs or whatever but uh this time i was let me just try something with some music and uh i just recorded it and it went (laughs) and what was the feedback that you got i got good feedback it was called love hates lust that was my first song go check it out it's it's definitely dope um yeah it was fire it was fire and then that's why i just kept going with it i was like, okay cool i can keep doing music and then i i finished up a whole ep in australia so that was pretty dope yeah, that that is pretty amazing. Did she ever respond to your song? Yeah, I mean, we she we still shout out to her. We we still like we cool. Like you know what I mean? I forgive her. <laughs> <She's still. laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, man, honestly, did not expect that to come out of your mouth within the first two minutes of the podcast. So here we go. This I'm <laughs> I'm I'm ready for the wild ride. Um, but I'm 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 interested in the move. What made you come to Australia in general? Like to come out and and just you know give it a go and then you obviously had connections here and you started speaking to people and musicians i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you right now so i did not have any connections to ice australia um i had a, i lived in a huge house in la uh with a few people we are uh, a bunch of roommates we were like all a bunch of creatives trying to make it and we lived in beverly hills and we used to have these radio parties <laughs> and uh my friend Abby, she's from Australia. She became my friend. Like I met her partying at the house, and uh, heard of another young lady. They were like, "Oh, if you ever come to Australia, like they party with us for like two weeks. They didn't like me. They like stayed there." And um, they were like, "Yeah, if you ever come to Australia, like just hit us up." So fast forward, like two years later, we're getting kicked out of the house. <clears throat> the city of Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, wants us out, and um, we got to find somewhere to go. So I moved over to Koreatown with the crazy ex girlfriend, and then things just went to shit. So we, um, uh, I was, I decided to move to Australia. I don't know. Me and one of my buddies were like, yo, we're going to move to Australia. He was going to the Gold Coast. I was, I was going to Sydney. So I landed in Sydney airport and I just randomly called those girls <laughs> and they answered. And I was like, where they came to pick me up? They housed me for like two, three nights. And then I got my own place and everything, my accommodations. And that was that. That is so wild for you to just be like, all right, I'm just going to go across the world and go to Australia, go to Sydney, like, especially because your friend was going to the Gold Coast. Yeah, he went to the Gold Coast. So we were, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, like, Xanarchy. We were, like, all in Xanarchy. We were, like, Lil Xan and Stephen Cannon. And, and, like, that's my that was my whole team. Like, that was my group. Uh, shout out to the guys. They're still my boys. 
Um, but yeah, like we were all like in Zanarchy, but like we, me and him were not rappers. Like we were just like a part of the group, you know what I mean? But like we, we left, he went up to go, he was a chef. He went up to go cook in the Gold Coast and uh, I was down in Sydney enjoying life and, uh, trying to make it as doing whatever. <laughs> and, and did he end up staying in the Gold Coast? Nah, he ended up leaving. We all left. Uh, so it was one of our other buddies, rest in peace to him. He just passed away recently. Los Gita Barber. He was a barber up there with me in Sydney. He was my barber. He was from Connecticut. And then my other buddy, Age, he was from uh, Cincinnati. He's uh, He was up in the Gold Coast cooking. And then we all left at like the same time. So we never went back. And yeah. Because I've got to say, the one thing that people always say to me is that Australia is just too far away. Nah, right. I loved it. I, I listen, like the only reason I had left, my dad had got cancer that the year oh, I'm that sorry. I was there. So when I ended up having to leave, which screwed up my work and holiday situation. So when I left, like it was like all bets were off for like that year. So I ended up having to just come back on like a holiday situation. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not the greatest. Is he how is he doing at the moment? He's good. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> <Sorry. okay. laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's good man i mean uh, amongst other you know smaller other health health issues but he's all right he's that's here. good to hear that's good to hear but, but yeah genuinely like whenever when i went to the u.s and i was speaking to people they were like oh i'd love to come to australia but the flight is too long like the flight is like that's it's cool. like I mean, it, I was living in LA. Like, plus, I like to fly. So I was living in LA. It was like a fifteen-hour straight flight. Like, that's nothing. Like, that's like that's light work. That's what I <laughs> say. I travel. So. That's yeah, I, I mean, travel. I, you, if, if you want to split it up, like I would, I would like fly from LA to Fiji. Fiji, like it's like twelve hours, and then like you just like chill in Fiji for a couple of days, and then fly to Australia for like you know four or five hours. But like that's just what I would do. But I mean, I mean I've got flights to Europe coming up Friday. Actually, yeah. I head to Europe. So. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll, I mean, I just think it's a mindset thing. Like I like flying as well. Um, I just think yeah. you've got to accept that it's going to be a while and you just kind of chill out. It's actually kind of nice and therapeutic in a way. Cause when you're on the flight, there's nothing you can do other than just try and get some sleep, try and enjoy like the quiet because you can't get texts. You can't message people. Like it's just. You just got to chill out for a bit. I don't know. There's something yeah. nice about it. Yeah, you're just there. Like, you connect with the people around you. Like, you meet people on the plane, you know, have a drink, have some good food, and just relax. Do some writing, you know. I don't know. I have a good time on the plane. Watch a couple movies. <laughs> yeah, especially if, like, you're if there's a delay. That's – it's weird. The, the easiest way to bond with people is through mutual fucked up shit going. Like if something goes yeah. wrong for everyone, everyone's like, all right, we're best friends now because like we're going through this together. We don't have a choice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. So let me ask you about the writing. Um, there's actually a quote that I found of yours. And I'm going to say it back to you. I thought it was a really good quote. Hopefully I got it from the right person, but it goes. It's why... by the quality. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, that's one, but I found a different one, which I thought was interesting. Why is it that people in Hollywood think that a short black, uh, oh, short black and tattoos. Oh, he's in the music industry. No motherfucker. I'm an author. Yeah. Literally. So I'm going to ask about that. Cause I mean, you do make music. So the irony is not unknown to me, but I'm sure that was before you started making music, but I'm yeah, interested to, that yeah. Like, 2015, yeah. Yeah. But I'm interested to know a little bit about that quote. What was your experience leading up to it? Well, well, you know, in LA, everyone's like, oh, like, what do you do? What do you do? That's like the number one question, right? So it's like, what do you do? You tell somebody what you do. They ask you uh, where do you live. You tell them where you live. They ask you if you got a pool. You got a pool. Then they're your new friend. Okay, so like everyone like would think like, oh, like, yeah, he's just a, oh yeah, he's a rapper like all, automatically, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm an author. They're like, oh, whoa, I would like, never expect that. And um, you know, I publish books for people. I've ghostwritten books for people, so I've you know I've done a lot with the no the book community, you know. So yeah, that was always the thing you always get was like, oh yeah, he's just, are you a rapper? Are you a singer? Are you a rapper? And like I was in I was in the group Zedarchy. Like everyone would see me around with the guys on tour and stuff. Like, are you a rapper? Are you a rapper? No, I'm just an author. <laughs> like, you know, I wasn't doing music. So, so 
how did you react to those type of questions? I'm sure because I mean, clearly you got it a lot. I loved it because of the shock value, and I'm like, you know what I mean? That's when it gives you time to go pull up yourself on Google, like everyone else in LA. Uh, pull up yourself on Google and show them, like, yeah, no, I'm just the author of a book. <laughs> you know, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy at all. Yeah. It's weird because I think LA is unique in that culture of, hey, tell me about yourself. Like, you know, I want to know, like, your status is a real thing, it seems. Yeah. In LA, uh, LA is you gotta have status you gotta we gotta have status you gotta have um you gotta have a pool <laughs> you gotta have a nice house and uh you gotta have a car because you gotta be able to get around uber is expensive as hell and uh public transport sucks so yeah you gotta have a few things in LA. <laughs> that's yeah. it and charisma confidence and charisma and you gotta be able to lie good that's what okay. i'm gonna tell you all right you, you got it to hollywood you got to be able to lie with the best of the best liars out there because they are they, they they are lying. Like coming back to New York was just like such a refreshing thing to move away from LA. Um, after five years living in LA, it's just like nah, it's just like not it. <laughs> I'll never live back there. Why do you think they lie all the time? Because everyone's trying to make it in Hollywood, and I feel like everyone is, um. Yeah, everyone's trying to make it. Everyone needs a place to stay. Everyone's trying to be something they're not. So if, if someone tells you, oh, yeah, oh, I'm an actor. Hey, 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 I'm John. I'm an actor. You're going to say, oh, okay, so what bar do you work at? You know, because they're definitely a bartender or an Uber driver. Like, easily. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they can't tell you at least five, six things that they've been in, then it's bullshit. And half of the people can't. So. Yeah. That's I mean, it's funny. Ever seen if you all real quick, if you ever see anyone come to your house in in LA, in in LA specifically, if anyone ever pulls up to your house with a bag, send them the other way because they're coming with a bag full of clothes and they come to stay with you. <laughs> oh, what is it about LA that has that culture though? Because it's like everyone talks it's about people, it, and people don't understand when they when when it's when it's time to hang it up. Like like, listen, bro, like. You're 40, 45, you've never been at anything, you're not going to make it. Go home. Like, get get out of here. You know, and people stay and stay and stay and stay and stay, and they continuously think that they're going to make it and make it and make it, and they don't. They become delusional. They spend all of their money. Now they become couch surfers. Then they, you know, then you become squatters and shit. So that's LA. To live and die in LA, baby. Yeah. Chasing the Hollywood dream. Yeah. Is it really that common? Because, I mean, we... I mean, maybe I'm delusional, but I don't see it here in Melbourne. I don't see the, the. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not like that in Australia, man. No one like. It's like everyone, like, likes to travel, like do like just normal shit. Like you know what I'm saying. Like no one's like obsessed with like being famous. Like you know what I mean. When I was in Sydney, Sydney, everyone worked all day. Everyone was like, "Work." You go to LA, you could you can do this party during the day, Sunday to Sunday. Like people, how many these people aren't working? If they do, they work at night. They're bartenders or Uber drivers. Yeah, that's wild to me. I mean, I sometimes go out during the day and, and it surprises me how many people are around. I'm like, I remember the first time I was at school. Um, I would think I was, I don't know, maybe 10. I had like a day off and I was like, why are so many people not at work? Like I just, did, I had this little crazy thought in my head that all kids go to school and all adults go to work and the, the streets are essentially empty. That yeah. is not the case. Not the case. <laughs> the case like in america like i mean like it's like especially since covid like since covid like i i, I know a lot of people that just don't work like i don't i don't know what they're doing to sustain themselves but they're not, not working but like yeah i don't know and that was before covid so like when i was in la but like la like now nah, like during the day there's always something to do there's always some people around because you gotta realize people are like you gotta be free during the day because you got you have auditions if you get auditions so that's like an excuse to be free during the day. And then in the evening time, it's time to party or whatever. But I don't know. Some people are bartenders. Some people are Uber drivers. Uh, I worked at a real estate office when I was in LA. Um, that's what I was doing. So, yeah. Do you think it hurts them? Like the, the culture of LA hurts the people that live there over a long period of time? Like unless you become successful, unless you be, you are you enter Hollywood mainstream, do you think it just ultimately 
hurts a lot of people, the the dream and then not being able to achieve it? Uh, I think it hurts you if you don't mentally understand, like, uh, like this is not, like, the only thing that you can be successful, especially nowadays, like, with all of this TikTok and the social media, you can pretty much do anything and make it your, on your own, you know, gain your own little fan base. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I don't want to see too many people. I don't know. I don't, I really don't even go to California anymore. Like, I really don't, unless I have to for, like, work or something, but I don't really, I don't touch that place. That well, place is deadly, man. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Let's move away from LA. Um, and let's, and let's, uh, and let's, and, and it's interesting because it's like what I actually have been thinking about recently is our obsession with fame. It's like, why do we all want to be famous? What is it about fame that we like? Whereas, like, you could easily be rich and successful without the fame. And I feel like a lot of people would rather be famous than they would be like and, undercover and, success. In in America, put it this way: in America, I kind of think this is just a, like my personal opinion. I think it's because, uh, like, if you go out somewhere and you, you're famous, right? You don't even have to have all the money in the world. You're getting in anywhere. You know what I mean? People acknowledge you, like you know, just the way you get treated is a lot different. You could be rich as hell and have all the money in the world, and no one knows who the hell you are. You're gonna get treated like a dog. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to show that money. Whereas if you're famous, you know, whether you're rich or not, you don't have to show that. So yeah, you don't but... ask too many questions about the people who have the bigger names. You don't know how much money they really have, if they do, if they don't, you know, just an illusion. Yeah. But what comes with that is you have no privacy. That too. But some people like that. Some people call paparazzi on the No, <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna say who I used to I, like. But prior to like, prior to like all of this, like when I was in um in college, I I worked at a Subo House in Miami, and I did the inside security, like checking people's member passes. But like a lot of people would call the paparazzi to meet them on the boardwalk or stuff like that for pictures and things like that. So, yeah, you see stuff like that. But yeah, I'm not gonna I'm, say I would do it. I mean, once the time comes for me, I'm not gonna say I wouldn't do that. I would do it. Yeah, say I probably wouldn't do it. I just, it, it's, I, it's too corny. I don't know. There's something about calling people and being like, Hey, I'm around to come take photos of me. And then people know that I do that. I just don't want people to know that I'm doing that. No, I would, yeah. yeah. I would rather that someone that I know that, and I'll be like, Hey man, every now and again, feel free to call popper, paparazzi and let, and they can come and see where we're at. If it's something cool, yeah, yeah, but yeah, don't yeah. tell me, oh I don't want to know. Yeah. Don't be a surprise to me. Shock factor. I got yeah. you. <laughs> Cause you want, you want it to feel real. You don't want, you don't want to be there going, Oh, where, where are the, I called them. Where are they? That's like the weirdest thing yeah. to be thinking. No, I feel it. Yeah. Cause then they just pop out. Well, I got you. <laughs> so why writing? Like what made you go into writing? What made you want to express yourself that way so um i had a, a birthday my first my first time ever going to vegas like 2013 and um i met i was staying at the monte carlo hotel it was that back then and um i met this older the guy i was telling him my college experience and stuff and he's like yeah you should just write a book about it it's, it's like a good story write a book about it so i said i'll oh, take him up on it so i got back to home i was living in seattle at the time and i started writing started writing a book and I ran into my editor, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Levine, and I, I ran into him at the tea shop. I didn't know who he was. He said, what are you doing? I was I'm writing a book. He said, well, I write books and publish them. And I was okay, cool. So we connected and I wrote a, a book and said the tone. We edited and pu published it in five months. Wow. Yeah. So how was January 20? I put it out, uh, May, 2014. It's about to be 10 years, actually. About to be 10 years. How was the yeah, experience of writing that? It was good. Uh, it was it was cool because I was working at the time. I was at my first like career job, you know, as an adult, and uh, I was working. So I was it was like you know long hours at night just writing and getting things done and putting the book together. But it was fun. It was a good time. It's good to put it on paper. Put it that way. And I I wrote everything just as is. Like and he went through it, edited and chopped and screwed everything out. I had too many words, too many pages. We had to consolidate, you know. And that's where he came in to help me. And I learned I learned a lot through the process too. And how was the experience once you published it? 
uh, once I put, it, it was cool. I published it. I put it out. I got a lot of sales because a lot, especially I, like a lot of people like that. The book, the book was about my four years in, in uni and um, I had already put, I put the book out and the book was moving. It was getting traction because it was a year after we had graduated. So um, yeah, people were buying it up and wanted to read it and see if they were in it. They made the book and fun party stories. A lot of people were mad, you know, because <laughs> like, I, I told <laughs> I mean, the truth can never be considered disrespect. Um, I changed a lot of names. I got clearance to keep a lot of names. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. It's called the best four year vacation ever out now. All platforms: Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, everywhere. Check it out. Do you have the audio book? Uh, I no. I think it's, it is an audio book out there, but it's not. But it's not my voice. I didn't do it. You might have to do a re release, man, on the ten year anniversary. Yeah. I got something cooking. I got something cooking. I was, I'm going to make an announcement about that. So I already got something cooking for the anniversary. Say 2024. Look, keep an eye out. I got something cooking for sure. That's awesome. I mean, because I, I had a New Year's revolution yesterday, uh, last year to write every day for a year. And then I had an idea. So it's an idea for a book. And then I wrote every year and, and it's finished. And now I have to edit it. And now I'm considering publishing the book as well. So, um, Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, me, give me give me heads up if you need some help with the publishing end of it or anything. Yeah. I yeah. I cause I, I mean, I, cause yeah, I finished, to be honest, I haven't reread it. I'm scared of what I wrote in a weird way. Um, I know it's, I know it's like kind of, it's got the bones of everything that I want. I wrote like 113,000 words or something stupid like that over the year. Um, but it was like that new year's resolution of like, let's get it out there. Let's like, and so I was, anyway, that's, that's like, but yeah, I think there's something liberating about writing something down about like getting your thoughts out. And I don't know, there's, you almost remember the things better when you write them that you're like, oh, I forgot about these details that now I'm remembering purely because I'm taking the time to think about it and lay it out in a way that makes sense. Yeah. hundred percent. No, I mean, like, as far as like the, like the writing aspect of it, like, as long as you don't take any breaks, I feel like, and you just keep on, keep on going, you won't ever get writer's block. You'll never get tired of what you're writing. You'll never get bored of it. And you'll understand it more. If you just keep going like day after day, after day, hour after hour, after hour until it's done. One complete project. Don't go on to another project till that one's finished. You know what I mean? It's like the same thing with like writing a song. Like, you know what I mean? Like typically my songs are written in my head. And then I just like, as I'm getting bars, okay, cool, cool. Let me just put this down. Okay, cool. Let me just lay this down. Like so that. do you go one track at a time? One song? Uh, yeah, typically, nah, but I got a lot of, like, songs that I might, I start and I just don't finish. Like, I do, I'm do. i different like that with music because, like, a lot of songs, like, sometimes it's a throwaway and then, like, sometimes I'll go grab that hook and use it for something else or something like that. So, yeah, I can't say that I, I finish everything, like, every song completely, completely. I got a lot of just songs with just hook laid down on them or just, like, some a bullshit verse on it, you know? Is to get the flow down. So yeah, yeah. I think I think it is different the two art forms because I mean, lots of people say I start a song and I keep going until I feel like I don't have any juice left in it at the moment, and I'll pick it up yeah. later. I just because the idea that I have to finish every song that I start stops me from mm -hmm. being create and creative enough to like yeah. do other stuff that inspire me in the moment. Like it just clamps you down whereas a book because it's a longer form project you need the discipline to be like okay i'm gonna do the one book otherwise you're gonna have a thousand books that always start but never finish well, it, it is. no i feel you i feel you <laughs> do you think you'll release another book uh i started writing the novel um, I had started it, this is probably like two years ago, I started writing a novel, I wanted to switch it up. I'm into like uh, psychological thrillers and true crime and shit like that. Um, so yeah, I came up with like this whole story. I just never got to finish it. I mean, right now I'm just kind of focused on the music aspect of things. Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone needs help, like with ghostwriting a book or something like that, I'll I'll do that. But like, as far as like coming up with my own idea, my own content right now, no, I don't even got the energy for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway, energy for that right now. Yeah. I'm getting ready to gear it up. 
We're going to tour hopefully in March. I think we leave at the end of March with Dylan Cooper and Gavlin again. And um yeah. So what why the music now that has you captivated? Like what is it that you're like, all right, this is where my energy is going, this is where my focus is. Uh, I mean, uh, my fans, I mean, I got fans, you know, Europe and America, Australian, New Zealand. So it's just like, you know, I, I, like, I love the fans. I love the performing aspect of it. I love the, the craft. I'm able to consolidate instead of writing a whole 216 pages, I can do it in 16 bars. You know what I mean? In two choruses and a bridge, you know, I can do it. I can tell a story in that amount of time. Like, I like to tell stories. All my songs are true that about my life. I'm not capping, I'm not shooting nobody, I ain't killing nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just travel and, and bang hot broads. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's uh that's just the dream life. That's just what I do. <laughs> it happens. <Yeah>. Time. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go on tour, what is that like? Uh tour is fun. Tour is um is tiring. Uh time consuming but fun good experience always a different experience every city fans are cool they're great um great interactions yeah just you gotta just know how to tour like yeah just like a lifestyle you get me yeah i mean like when i think about touring i'm like mm, that's probably not a lifestyle that i would love too much i feel like the the intensity of like shows and that would be really fun but just the just the relentlessness of it, of just like the the constant grind. Like I feel like by the end of tours, you just must be exhausted. Like it's just like, all right, I really gave my all at every point. Yeah, you come back home and you just like, you just wind down. Like you just, you know what I mean? Like you take a nap, you go to sleep. That's it. Like, you know, go to bed. I sleep for like two, three days, falling off. Just chilling Netflix on, you know, relax, blinds closed, just like regrouping. And then after that, you get up, get back on your regular routine. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, artists do like six month long tours, comedians do like year long tours where they're constantly touring, constantly doing shows. Like, yeah, I've never, yeah, that's crazy. I did what well, we did 26, 26 days last year. And then the only other time I've been on tour other than that was when I wasn't doing music, which is with Lil Xan and the guys. And I did like the American side of the tour, the East Coast with them, which was pretty cool. Like that, that's, they be yeah, like rode like the Winnebago, like the beds and everything. It was pretty cool. <laughs> that, was, like, that was crazy. Stop, we like stopped in certain city hotels. It was pretty cool. So how many people were in the Winnebago? Uh, what, back then on that yeah. tour? That was... Probably six, seven, no, seven or eight, seven or eight people. All right, seven or eight people for a month. Yeah, seven or eight people for for a month. Yeah, I think that would drive me crazy, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, shit's insane. It's insane, but um, but yeah, lot this last year, last year, um. We were in a sprinter, sprinter van or whatever, and uh, yeah, everyone was like flying everywhere. Some people flew, met in different places throughout Europe, and got hotels and stuff like that. So it was just pretty different. You see, this the hotel life. I can live that life. The That's living, life. yeah, living in the in the in the Winnebago for a month with like eight people is. Mm, I need my personal space, so I'm. I, yeah. I'm I'm pretty yeah. outgoing. Like I I do mind I don't mind having a chat. Funny that. Um, but the just being cramped in a Winnebago and then because like you're also like drinking and you're partying and you're kind of fucked up, and then just just being like, all right, guys, I need a couple of hours to just myself. That's what I would need. Nice. It's like I just need tonight when no one talks to me. <laughs> yeah. After just like peace and tranquility like at this point like literally I, literally but honestly yeah. the late nights would kill me i'm like an early riser um the, so all the late nights i'd be yeah maybe it's a good thing i don't have the tour lifestyle 
Yeah, <laughs> I think you should stay. <laughs> a couple of trips a year, scattered, scattered out. Yeah, no. Nah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I am fortunate to travel a lot these days. So, um, I do, I do love to travel and 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 get out. I think it, like, I don't know. There's something about I get itchy feet where I have to leave and I have to just experience something different again. It otherwise I yeah. just feel like I'm going a little bit insane. Yeah, same way I get when my anxiety goes through the roof of my travel. Like if I'm out on the plane at least once a month, like I'm going like a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> How do you manage your anxiety outside of that? Like throughout the day, what do you do that, that keeps you calm, keeps you peaceful? Meditation. Meditation, peace, therapist, you yeah, know, all the good stuff. Yeah. That's it. It's not it's not heavy anxiety like to the point where I'm like writing myself loose. But I'm not like, you know. Um yeah, I'm just like, you know, I just need like traveling. Like I write most of my songs like when I'm in the air. A lot of my choruses come while I'm in the air or while I'm taking a walk, while I'm overseas. I'm in London, I'm walking through Kensington, through Earl's Court. And uh yeah, you know, that's where most of my most of my stuff comes from. It's funny that most of your stuff comes while traveling. Yeah, uh, like pretty much everything. My Spanish song, Ted Asesito, came while I was in Colombia. Um, in Cartagena. Shout out to Cartagena, Colombia. Uh, yeah, I wrote that song there. I did like a whole EP. Like I said, my first EP was done in Australia. Um, my second album was done in Mexico. Um, my first album, I'm sorry, was done in Mexico. It's called Welcome to Vicks World. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, pretty much everything I've written has come along. All my new stuff that I've done like with Paul Couture was all done in like London or Portugal, you know, so. What do you think it is that, that I don't know, it feels like home doesn't inspire you as much as elsewhere? No, it's like typically like for me, like, it, like I said, like when I'm in the air, like I get like, like you said, like that's therapy. And like that's therapy for me because it's like, okay, cool. Like everyone, like, I usually fly like at night, like the red eye, and um, I'm up, I'm wide awake, I'm ready, I'm excited to be where I'm going, I'm excited to go see something new, even though I've probably been to this place already. Like I go to London so frequently, I think I know the whole city, but I don't. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's always something new to see. And, um, you know, so I'm always just excited about that factor. And then, like, it's giving me stuff to write about, stuff I'm seeing on the airplane, stuff I'm seeing at the airport. And then once I get to London, then my trip wraps up. Then I get back and I get in the studio and I say, okay, cool, boom, let's go. Let's flow. You know what I mean? Let's go. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's walking. I don't know. There's something about walking that I get all my, like, good thinking done where I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, it's the steps. I don't know. There's something, the meditative nature of the breathing and the steps and just. Yeah. And I wrote one, I wrote one, one chorus. I, I, my song changed up and two and two and unhypnotized were written when I was walking and I forget the name of the park, but it was in London. Like, it's just like, just me, it's just in central. And like, I was walking through this park on my way to fashion week and I just went, got some food and I had to be back to walk the runway. And I was like, Oh, I had the beats playing. And I'm like, I got it. I got it. I got it. And the, <laughs> the beats kind of similar. So, when we got back, I was singing the wrong chorus for the wrong beat. And I'm like, no, switch the beats around. I was like, yeah, here we go. Let's go. We had it going. But yeah. And then you just got back and walked the runway. Yeah, I went and walked the runway. Yeah, I, I walked Fashion Week as well. Yeah. I walked Fashion Week, like, pretty much September, early February. How did you get into the fashion industry? I mean, man, the more I discover about you, the more I'm like, all right, you literally do it all. Yeah, well, in uh, well, in, in in college, I minored in uh, fashion merchandise. Um, that was my minor, and my major was sports entertainment and event management. But um, so yeah, I got into fashion that way. Um, just always being around a lot of people in the, in the industry. Then my buddy Wes, he runs uh, Original Crackage, a clothing brand, and uh, yeah, he's like put me on as a model, and that's it. So how long has it been now since you've been modeling? I've been modeling since about twenty fifteen. Okay. So you're also coming up to a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that, yep. Modeling. I'm about to be, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I want to do like uh, Miami Swim Week. I want to get that out of the way this this July. Hopefully I can get in on that. I got to get my abs back. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> my, my, Miami Swim Week, man, hopefully. And then uh, after that, I'll probably wrap it up. Why? What makes you think you'll be like, I'm done with that? 
I mean, uh, well, my, no, I'm bullshit. Miami Swim Week, and I got to walk Paris Fashion Week because I haven't walked. I've been to Paris Fashion Week, but I haven't walked it. And if I walk, once I do those two, then I'd say I, I did everything. I did the Italy, I did uh, the Milan Fashion Week, I did New York, I did LA, I did, uh, yeah, I did all of them pretty much. Everything. Out London, I did London Fashion Week a few times. So it's just like, yeah, I think I'm kind of over it. <laughs> yeah. What is it about it that you're like just kind of not? loving at the moment it's not that i'm not loving it it's just like i'm just kind of moving on to the next thing in my life just focusing more like on the music i want to get to that aspect of music you know i'm not even too out where i want to be you know and at all so i'm trying to get to that to that point musically and then i can circle back to whatever but yeah it's so that. funny though because it's like so many people would literally kill to be walking those shows and you're like i did them i'm done don't want to do them again i'm ready to just yeah. make my move yeah it's cool like i mean i didn't even expect i didn't even accept any for this february coming up but like, i'm not doing anything i'll walk again probably set uh if not like i said if not july then september october i'll do new york and then i'll do paris and then i'll be done and then if i get the chance to ever do miami swim week I'll always take that opportunity. <laughs> <That's fire. laughs> well, you heard it here. So if anyone is looking for Miami Swim Week, we got the man right here. And then if you become desperate enough, that's when you come and get me. And then you accept that there's no abs and you just get this bearded Aussie guy. <laughs> if you go for a different look, that's where I come in. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. deal with the modeling. Yeah. How are the people in the modeling industry? I think everybody's pretty cool. I mean, uh, you know, you got some assholes back there, like when you're backstage and stuff like that. Some of the designers are douchebags. Um, but other than that, I think everybody's pretty chill. I mean, we at, we've always closed, like my buddy Wes, whenever I walk with him, his brand, we've always closed out the show. So it's like a kind of level of respect for like his brand. You know that they have so like and i'm i'm always like the you know i guess you could say the loud chilling interacting with everybody because like i'll bring bottles of champagne into the back like i got like blogs and shit done like you see me popping bottles like the models like can we drink this i'm like yeah, let's drink this <laughs> like, you know I mean? <laughs> like the designers like pissed off like these like let everybody have fun like i'm just trying to open up to be different a little bit you know fashion weeks have to be a little bit different but yeah yeah yeah, but I feel like, I don't know, there's something to me about, I think uh, most people are genuinely good people and there's the odd, like you said, douchebag, where it's like, man, you're just, there's some missing that they're not enjoying. Like there's some jealousy or there's some going on. Yeah, you got like, like some of the models, I mean, some models, some of the models, you know, they would be a little, I don't know, they would be a little too confident, <laughs> I guess you could say. But you know, that comes with everything. That comes with the game. You got to respect them for being confident because if you don't love yourself, you can never trust that no one else loves you. So, you know, like I said, everyone is everyone. People are people. You just got to take it for what it is. But when you backstage, you have a good time. I, I have fun. I don't give a shit who's looking, who's not. I come with my camera guy. You're saying London. I love London fast for me. <laughs> they turn up and <laughs> they turn up. Yeah. When you, when you think about your music and like the things you want to do now and like 2024, what have you got like goals that you've set out for yourself? Anything in particular that you're looking to, to tick off? Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to be dropping, I might, I might just surprise and drop a music video tonight, actually. Um, <laughs> but if not tonight, definitely this week. Um, I got a video done already. Um, I got, a, I got a bunch of new records I got coming this year. A lot of feel good music, something similar to like the Christmas song. I got like a celebrate song coming up. Something that everybody can relate to, whether you rich, poor, down out, you know what I'm saying? Anything like, it's just really feel good. Celebrate. We're going to have a good time. It's really groovy. Good, uh, catchy song. Um, I have uh, another record coming produced by Paul Couture called Wrong America featuring Cargo Kel. He's a, a, a new hip hop, like pure hip hop bread artist out of Brooklyn. It's my brother. Um, I have, uh, I got a couple things coming up. I got a lot of stuff coming up, especially after the tour and things like that. New merch, a lot of things coming. A lot of things to expect for 2024. A couple of features coming up, so we're going to be all right. Awesome. Is there an album coming out? 
Uh, right now, I'm focused on singles. I got an album. I got an album ready. I got probably about two albums worth of music ready, ready to launch right now. Uh, but I'm just taking my time with the singles right now. I'm just dropping singles. I'm just having fun dropping singles. I want to get some more videos out this year. That's definitely the goal. Get a lot more Instagram content. Get more active on Instagram because I'll I be slacking on that. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think I think everyone slacks on that. Everyone's like, yeah, I th yeah. Yeah. Everyone tired of it it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever but yeah I, I gotta start posting more um but yeah, i do post when i'm releasing and you know i got uh the christmas song was, was was like a different touch to music that i was trying trying a different sound out and i got a good reaction off of that so that was good to end off 2023 being i'm a christmas baby i had to drop a christmas song and yeah yeah i don't know it's weird i feel like my brother recently deleted instagram because he was just like i'm done i'm over it I feel like everyone feels that way in the weirdest way. Everyone's like, kind of like, yeah. I do some, but like I said, un until you get to that, where you want to be, you can't, I can't do it. I can't yeah. Do it. I can't. Yeah. You want to be the one where like your fans are like, Hey, where's slick to Victor's Instagram. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One. Oh yeah. No, I, I got to keep my Instagram. So I'll keep it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just going to start posting a lot more. I used to be very active on there. That's what's crazy about it, but I uh, I gotta get more active. I gotta get back on it. So I'll be back on there. Got a lot of new content coming, music videos, a bunch of stuff coming. So we'll have a good time with it. New yeah. Travels. Shit. Yeah. Do you know what's interesting? As I as I speak to you, I don't know whether you've picked up a bit of an English accent. Every now and again, there are yeah. some words that come out English, and I'm like, wait, is that my ear, or is that is that actually also what I'm hearing? Spend so much time in London, man. Thinks he's a proper Briton. Eh? To get me in it, <laughs> <laughs> straight up. But no, no, no. I'm from New York, man. Like I'm not, I'm not all. No, I'm not, I'm not British. <laughs> I'm not British. Yeah. A lot of people think I. Even when I'm in London, like a lot of people from London, like always think because I'm always there. So it's like, um, I got a couple calls this week. Uh, my son was on, she was on vacation out in Mexico. She's like, m met this uh, girl from London. She's like, do you know about me? She's like, the Victor. She's like, yeah, I know him. I listen to the music. He's always in London. I am always out there. So like, I really love the UK. Shout out to the UK. Big shout out. I love London. Like, love it. That's well, awesome. it was just like your switch into the UK accent was so natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could do that. I could do it. Like, it's like, it's, it's clockwork for me. Uh, it's clockwork in that. It's clockwork in that. Yeah. In that. It, yeah. I say <laughs> I can do like little bits of the English accent. It's just I can't hold it. That's the problem. I can't. Yeah. I couldn't do like I couldn't really get like too much of Australian. They used to be like, mate, you sound for me. Like I just couldn't. Really yeah. Get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Some accents. I can't do New Zealand. <laughs> A lot of my mates were like from um uh, were Lebanese and like they were like hectic and heavy and everyone else didn't say like it's hectic, bro. It's, yeah, hectic, it's hectic, bro. bro. Yeah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> and the girl you know they like, say, oh my gosh, no, <laughs> no, no, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney and the Goldie, I love Sydney and the Gold Coast. Melbourne was cool too. I had a good time with Melbourne, but I want to go to Perth. That's where I want to go next. I want to go to Perth. You know, I've actually yeah, never been to Perth. Only I know on the east coast of of, of the Australia has ever been to Perth. <laughs> no one's ever been. Because of everything that we hear is that there's not much to do in Perth. Oh, I mean, beautiful beaches is what I hear. I'm going to go to Perth. I reckon I'm going to go to Perth. You just got to be careful of the sharks. Nah, I'm good. I'm, I got over that fear when I was in <laughs> and I got over that fear. I had a, I had a, um, a scare. My friend Sally pushed me off one of the little, one of the little tiny little cliffs at, um, at Gordon's Bay into the water. And they, were, they were like, it's sharks in the water today. And I was like, screaming <laughs> the sharks. <show." laughs> no, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, everyone, I don't know. It's so weird. Like, unless you come to Australia and you live in Australia for a bit. You don't realize, like, everyone thinks it's the wild, wild west where you have to fight yeah, kangaroos yeah. and sharks yeah. and shit, but that never happens. Something like that. The craziest thing I did see was, like, I was out for, I used to go for runs at night, and um, I was running down, uh, I used to live in Bondi, Bondi Beach, 
and I was running up the hill actually, going towards Bondi Junction, and there was like this huge. And luckily, it was like street light, so I could see. But it was this huge spider web, like the size of like a dog, bro, like in front of me. <laughs> I almost ran through it. But the spiders are definitely there. I got some crazy videos of some spiders. I've seen some snakes when like I was going. Um, I used to do the Bondi to Fuji Coastal Walk, um, in Sydney. And I've seen a ton of snakes over on that shit. And uh, I've seen, uh, I have a video of like two sharks. I couldn't get the video of the sharks, but there's like, they were doing like a, sh a shark rescue for Bandai Rescue that day. And um, I got a video of that. And I've seen, I got some videos of kangaroos up in Newcastle, but that's it. They're not, they're not anywhere in the city at all. <laughs> You're not going to see that shit. Yeah. Literally, one of my friends, he lives in Bondi. And I have never seen anything, any weird animals. I mean, other than the di different uh, Sydney siders that come around and the and everyone that's hanging around Bondi, that is about it. I like, did see a huntsman. I did see a huntsman spider. Um, twenty eighteen New Year's Day. Yeah. That's scary as shit ever. Oh, they're massive. Yeah. Sleep like <laughs> um, um, Dave and Kia like she wake up slick and I'm like I'm like, I'm like peeking my eye and I'm like oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I had one, I had a huntsman once I came home and it was, it was, I had a long day at work and I came home. It was above my bed. Yeah. Like, and I was like, and I was like, Oh, this is the worst fucking bullshit I have to deal with. And I don't deal with spiders very well. I'm scared of sprite spiders. Like, and those <laughs> motherfuckers are ugly as shit. They are the grossest fucking things. Yeah. Bring us spiders, but yeah, nah. <laughs> I tell you what, the, where the worst spiders are, they've got bird eating spiders up in Queensland, which is the most yeah. fucked thing ever. Yeah, Queensland, Queensland's got some pretty massive spiders. I I only spent the see. I only went up there for like a week, so I didn't really get to see too much. But like like I said in Sydney, like I would go. I was on the coastal world every day, so I would be. I would see all types of shit going down the little stairs down like the beach at Bronte Beach. And shit like that, like like these huge stairs you go down, and uh, there'd be like snakes and shit hanging out, coming out of the little, you know, out of the woods and shit, the red belly snakes and shit like that. I I seen a brown recluse spider before. Um, yeah, I seen some shit out there. The dingoes. Dingoes. <laughs> That's yeah. Like, dingoes running around. Yeah. Yeah, but it's weird. They don't. They don't really want to fuck with you most of the time, unless you accidentally yeah. step yeah. on one. Just out. Running around having a good time. That's it. So I, was I, thought I, was gonna, I thought I was gonna see a lot more like koalas, like in like just like in the trees, but like you don't really see them. I saw them in the zoo. But that was about it. Yeah, I mean koalas. Koalas are weird. They're actually quite vicious. Like the they like to sleep. They don't want you bothering. No, nah, they sleep like twenty four, twenty three hours a day. They eat eucalyptus. Yep. 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 <laughs> and I think when I go back, I mean, talk about fear with the sharks. I'm gonna do the shark, uh, the shark diving at uh, Manly, the Manly Zoo with the gray nose sharks. And Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. I actually want to go shark diving. Like I've been saying to my friends, I'm yeah. like, I want to go shark diving. So if you ever need company for the shark diving, my man, you know who to. I'll, I'm there. Um, but I, 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 honestly, <laughs> I reckon you could go shark diving in Perth, like Perth in yeah. the ocean. Uh, I think Perth. I think the water. I think the water is just a bit cold on that side, bro. If I think I'm, I think I'm gonna stick to, to, to the Manly Zoo. <laughs> no okay. one's been eating. No, but you you put on a wetsuit. Put on a wetsuit. None of the water gets in. Then we get to go in the cage, and then we just see some great yeah. whites. Oh, you. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. That's yeah. The, that's yeah. The, I want to do. It. It's weird. I'm. I don't like the scary shit, but then the some of the scary shit. I'm like, I would just gotta do it. I like the adrenaline that comes. Yeah. Nah, I'm. With, I'm with all. I'm with all of that. I just not like with the water activities, bro. I don't really need to be trapped in a cage. <laughs> I'm below. I was just. I just watched last night. I just watched that uh, 47 meters down, and I was like, holy shit! Like, just imagine, you like in this cage, and like it should just, breaks. <laughs> you just go, man. I don't know. But yeah. I do want to, but I, onto the water uh, topic. One of my things I would love to do is rest in peace to the people on the submersible, but I would like to go see the Titanic. That's some shit that I'm into. 
I'm into that kind of shit right there. Yeah. Like that right there put me down there. I'm going not on one of those little submersibles. I need to be on the, the submarine. They have the submarine tours that you go on. It's like a seven day excursion. I would like to go on that. Yeah, I would do that sure. too. I'd like. I'd go. <laughs> I don't know. It's this weird world down there. Like I w someone asked me the other day, like, would you go down? Like, would you go on a submarine and go? And I'd be like, fuck yeah. I want to see what's down there. None of that, none of that shit where like, you know, uh, no billionaire stuff where I have this like custom one that implodes when I get down there and I go to the deepest, I want it as long as it's safe and like it's standard. I, I would like to see what's, what's down there. <laughs> Did you ever go Same to the here. Great Barrier Reef? No, I didn't go. I didn't go. I wanted to go. What's the beach up there? Um, it started to everyone goes. Uh, shit. What's the name of it? It's um, damn, 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 damn. I can't remember the name of the beach, but everyone goes, and the water's like so white and like it's it's so beautiful up there. But like, nah, they want. Was it Apollo Bay? No, uh, winter, winter, something. I forget the name of it. White winter. So it's winter. So I, I forget the name of it. I forget the name of the beach. But everyone goes there, and they get like these um the uh, the cabins on the beach and shit is pretty fire. Oh, is it just called Winter Beach? Yeah, Winter Beach. Winter Beach. Winter Beach. Yeah, Winter Beach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, looks like you got lots of shit to do down here, my friend. You have. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I was, I spent most of my time in Queensland in the Gold Coast. I was just in the Goldie. I was, uh, I was at, uh, my buddy was working at Glass and he was working at the Loose Moose. And, um, uh, older mate of ours is, was, he's like a good friend of ours. Um, from, he's traveled to America. Um, he, that, my buddy was staying with him and working. He, like, is an owner in those restaurants. So that was pretty cool. And this is like, you know, this is five, it's like six years ago. Yeah. At this point, five, six years ago. Yeah. Man, you are very well traveled. I got to say, uh, most of the people I speak to are not as well traveled as you, my friend. I think it, it comes across really well. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think like, you know, when you travel, you see more of the world, you realize that the way I live isn't really the way most people live. Yeah. And like, I think like another reason, like I like it so much is cause like, like in America, right. For instance, like for me to travel from like New York to California, right. It's like five, six hundred dollars flight, it's like commercially. Right. You're in Australia, you want to go to like Bali. I'm paying to go to a whole another country. You know what I mean? Means so you get to see so much more. You get to go to Bali. You get to go to Japan. You can go to New Zealand. I I, I was in Auckland for for a week out there. Auckland is beautiful. I stayed yeah. in Auckland. Great time. Yeah. Auckland was nice. I do want to stretch when I get back. Um, but yeah, like Fiji. I've been to Fiji. I did Bali. Um, yeah, I want to go to Thailand, uh, Singapore. I want to do too. But yeah. Yeah, you Thailand is sick. Them. Yeah, Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's everyone's been to Bali. Every Australian's been to Bali. So, um, it's like, like that's like Americans going to Miami. Everyone goes to Bali. Yeah, everyone. That's like yeah. New Zealand is beautiful. Like we did, me and my high school friends, we did a road trip like for three weeks. As soon as we finished uh, high school, we did a road trip. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, Europe is my place. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, it's cool. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Depending on what you're talking about, I mean, I, I stayed in Italy for uh, for quite a while. Uh, Italy's cool. Uh, like, there's nothing like London. Like, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. I think. Yeah. What else am I gonna say? What else is well, Switzerland well, I mean, is fire. Swiss Switzerland, agreed. Switzerland. Switzerland's sick. Switzerland is fire. Uh. Everywhere else is kind of like the same. I mean, not the same. It's, it's cool. I wouldn't want to like live there. Like I, like I would live in London. London is like, like just like New York. Sydney reminds me kind of like of a New York, but like with beach. You know what I mean? With an accessible beach, like right there. Like you know, and it's kind of like it doesn't really get cold. And to me, it doesn't really get cold in Australia. Not with the cold I come from. So <laughs> you know, like but like, like the winter. I spent the whole winter there. It was like it felt like like a spring almost here so yeah yeah i mean yeah we all went, we went to budapest last year i went to croatia last year uh rome is one of my favorite cities it is just one of the coolest oh, cities to to visit um six months so 
Yeah. I see, I've always thought that I could retire in Italy. Like that's where I could yeah, like. It's just, the, it's just that it's very old. It's like nothing's updated. You know what I mean? That's the only thing that would, that would fuck me up is like that. You know what I mean? Coming from America, like, I, you know, you come from Australia, like the uh, technology is through the roof. You know, I think like six parents. six months at a time. You know, you go there and you avoid the winter, and you just and then you just like chill out. And I don't know this the the vibe there is really different. Summers are nice. It's beautiful in the summertime. Italian summers are nice. Italian summer evenings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, there's yeah. just something about culturally. Check out Portugal. Shout out to Portugal too. Portugal shows me a lot of love in my music. Um, they love me out there. Like I get, I can a good rapport when I get to the airport and stuff. It's pretty cool. Portugal, Lisbon, Portugal is it for sure. Well, well man, you're gonna have to give me some recommendations because I will be in uh, in London and Paris this. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, got, oh, yeah. I got you. I'm like, no, some, yeah, some, as soon as we get off here, I got you. I got you. I'll awesome. talk to with the right people in London. Yeah. No, that's going to be sick. But, uh, but yeah, man, I actually only have one more question. This is going to turn into a travel podcast uh, at some point between you and I just going back and forth. But, uh, but yeah, when you're down, we'll definitely have to have you back on the show. And then when I'm traveling and if I, when, when I go back to New York, then I'll, I'll definitely hit you up, man. But I only have one more question for you. It's the hardest question that I ask on the show. If you had to recommend one album, that everybody should listen to at least once to get an appreciation of can be any genre of music, cannot be your own music, what would it be? One album that everyone should listen to, uh, listen to the 444 album by Jay-Z. Why? Why that album? You need knowledge with the information for 999. That album helped me... Um, write my first song like that during that time when that album came out was when I released my first song, Love Face Lust in Australia. The four 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 album was out. Um the four 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 album teaches you everything pretty much investment wise. Life it's just it's just a it's just a very educational album. So I think that everyone should listen to that album. I think anyone can relate. Uh black, white, Spanish, it doesn't matter. Like any continent because it's like it's the man is telling you a story. From a kid from Brooklyn who grew up with nothing to drug dealing to making it in music to turning music into owning corporations to become to becoming a billionaire and how he did it and most of the old things is talking about how you should buy art because art's a new investment. <laughs> That's it. That's well, how you end it. there you go. I love that recommendation. I mean, four forty four the song, yeah, like the instrumental on that, the soul sample on that is just. I don't know. There's something heartbreaking. He's so honest on it. He's Marcy me. You know what I mean? Brooklyn shit. So, yeah. There we go. You have the recommendation. The one and only Slick to Victor came through. Man, I'm excited to see what else you come out with this year. As you said, you're focusing on singles. Um, there will be a music video. Well, lucky for me, I get the exclusive that is, is potentially dropping in like 24 hours. It'll be out by the time the podcast drops. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, make sure you check it out. And also, if you haven't checked it out, he can also speak Spanish. So he's got songs that are not only in English. Uh, they're also in Spanish. But yeah, man, it's been an absolute pleasure. No I had to drop that in there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, it is awesome to see you come through. Um yeah, I can't wait for for you to continue releasing music. As we said, Christmas Morning is his most recent single that came out at the the end of uh, 2023. It's obviously 2024, man. But is there anything else you wanted to plug, anything else you wanted to shout out? Yeah, man, uh, everybody will give me a follow. It's your boy Slick the Victor, S-L-I-C-K-T-O-R, V-I-C-T-O-R. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.